Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're working in our sequences and series series and we're going to be going over a summary of all of the different convergence tests. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Of course we need to have an infinite series, right? So when choosing a test, the first thing I suggest to do is apply the divergence test, right? So this is where we take the limit as k approaches infinity of our a sub k and there are two outcomes. The first one is that if this is not equal to zero, then that tells us that it diverges. You're done, right? The other option is that it does equal zero, and that means we need to try a different test. So here are the rest of the tests, right? So first, look it to see if it's a special series. So one special series is going to be the geometric series, right? So that's going to be the summation of a times r to the power of k, right? a is going to be the first term, and r is going to be the common ratio. Here there are two outcomes, so if the common ratio is greater than or equal to 1, that tells us that the series is going to diverge, right? The other option is that if r is less than 1 absolutely, right, this is then going to converge, and we also know what it converges to. It converges to a over 1 minus r. So here, let's go ahead and take the example summation k equals 1 to infinity of 3 over 2 to the k. So if I were to rewrite this, we have the summation, right, and that's going to be 3, which is going to be our first term. And then this is going to be 1 over 2 to the power of k. One thing about a geometric series, though, is that it has to start at k equals 0. So we have to change the index. So k equals 0 to infinity. I subtracted 1 from the index. That means I need to add 1 to the index. So that's going to be k plus 1. So I can actually use um, exponent rules, right? This is going to be to the power of k times, and that's going to be 1 half to the power of 1, right? And so if you wanted, you can go ahead and combine that 3 and that 1 half, and that's going to be 3 over 2. So actually, our a is equal to 3 halves. Our common ratio is equal to 1 half. Since our common ratio is less than 1, that tells us that this is going to converge, and we can also find what it converges to. That's going to be a over 1 minus r, 3 halves divided by 1 minus 1 half. That is going to be 3 halves divided by 1 half, which is equal to 3. So this is going to converge to 3. Another special series that we have is the p-series. So this is going to be 1 over k to a power of p. There are two outcomes here as well. The first one is that if p is greater than 1, then the series is going to diverge, right? 1 over k to the power of 10, those terms are going to get super, super little, and they're not going to add very much anymore. If p is less than or equal to 1, then the series is going to diverge, right? So I have two different series here. For example, we have 1 over k to the 1 half, right, the square root of k. So in this case, p is equal to 1 half. That tells us that this is going to diverge, right? The p is smaller than 1. For our other series, we have that p is equal to 6, and so that tells us that this is going to converge, right? So p series is super nice. I think it's a common one. Another special series is a telescoping series. So here I have an example. We have the summation k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k minus 1 over k plus 1. What we do with the telescoping series is we take a partial sum. So first we're going to plug in n is equal to 1, so we get 1 minus 1 half plus n is equal to 2, or k is equal to 2. We get um, 1 half minus 1 third plus 1 third minus 1 fourth, and this is going to go on forever until our nth term. So that's going to be 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. Now notice what's canceling out here. This 1 half is canceling with this, the 1 thirds are canceling, the 1 fourths will cancel with the future one, and this 1 over n is going to cancel with the one before it. So all we're left with is Sn is equal to 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. Now we're going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of both sides because when we take the limit of the partial sum, that's going to be your actual series. That's going to be k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k minus 1 over k plus 1. So we took the limit as n approaches infinity of the left side, and we're also going to do that on the right side. So we get this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. Now as n goes to infinity, 1 over n plus 1 is going to go to 0. So this is going to converge to 1. So this tells us since our series converges to 1, it's of course going to converge. Now if this diverge, right, let's say this was like inside here, it was like the natural log of n plus 1. That's going to go to infinity. That's going to diverge. And so that would also tell us that our series diverged. If you don't see that it's a special series, then the next thing you can look for is if it looks like a function, then you can go ahead and try the integral test. So there are two outcomes with the integral test. First, what you do is if the integral from 1 to infinity, that's just the index of the series of f of x dx converges, then our series is also going to converge. Similarly, if the integral diverges, 
then our series is also going to diverge. So they're going to do the same thing, right? So let's go ahead and look at the harmonic series, for example. What you do is you take your a sub k and you write it as a function. So this is going to be 1 over x. And we're going to take the limit as b approaches infinity because we're writing it as a proper integral from 1, because that's our lower index, all the way up to infinity, which is going to be our b. And that's going to be 1 over x dx. So here we have the limit as b approaches infinity. This is going to be the natural log of x evaluated between 1 and b. Going ahead and plug in upper minus lower, I get natural log of b minus natural log of 1. But the natural log of 1 is just equal to 0, so that's just going to be 0. Now as b approaches infinity, natural log of b is also approaching infinity, so this is going to diverge to infinity. So this tells us that our series diverges. So that's the case if it looks like a function. So if it doesn't look like a function, then what you can go ahead and do is look if it has k factorial, k to the power of k, or some a to the k, where a is just a number, right? So like 3 to the power of k. And what you can go ahead and do is try the ratio or the root test. So we're going to go by through them one by one. First, we have the ratio test. So what we do is we take the limit as k approaches infinity of a k plus 1 divided by a k, and this is equal to something, right? We're going to call it r. So there are three outcomes here. First is r is between 0 and 1, and it can equal 0. This tells us that the series is going to converge. Now, if r is greater than 1, and that includes r diverging to infinity, then it's going to diverge, right? And then we also have if r is equal to 1, then the test is inconclusive, and you need to try a different test, right? So let's go ahead and take this example. The first thing I notice is that we have that a to the k, and we also have that k factorial, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say r is equal to the limit as k approaches infinity. This is how I always do it. I first take the k plus 1. So this is going to be 8 to the k plus 1 divided by k plus 1 factorial. And we're supposed to divide by a k, but I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So k factorial divided by 8 to the power of k. Now we can go ahead and simplify this, right? 8 to the k plus 1 is equal to 8 to the k times 8 to the power of 1 times k factorial. And that k plus 1 factorial, we can pull out the k plus 1, and that leaves us with k factorial times 8 to the k. So notice here what cancels out. We have that 8 to the k cancels. We have k factorial cancels. So all we're left with is the limit as k approaches infinity. In the numerator, we just have an 8. In the denominator, we have k plus 1. As k goes to infinity, this is going to approach 0, right? And so that tells us that our series is going to converge because r is equal to 0. Now, the root test is pretty similar, right? So with the root test, you say rho is equal to the limit as k approaches infinity, and you take the kth root of your little a sub k formula. So the options are exactly the same. If rho is between 0 and 1, then it converges. If rho is greater than 1, then it's going to diverge. And if rho is equal to 1, then it's inconclusive, and you need to try a different test. So here we have another example. We have 4 to the power of k divided by k to the power of 10. I noticed here we have a to the power of k, but there's no like factorial or anything with it. So I want to get that power away, which is why we're going to use the root test. So here we have the limit as k approaches infinity, right? We're going to take the kth root of our little formula. That's going to be 4 to the power of k divided by k to the power of 10. So let's go ahead and simplify this. We have the limit as k approaches infinity. That just leaves that 4 in the numerator, right? But then we get k to the power of 10 divided by k. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that, right? We have a limit as k approaches infinity. That 4 stays the same, but that's going to be k to the 1 over k to the power of 10. And the reason I'm doing this is because we're going to go ahead and use this little thing. The limit as k approaches infinity of k to the 1 over k is just equal to 1. And you can prove it by taking the natural log of both sides. I'm not going to in this video just to save time. So knowing that this goes to 1, this is going to be 4 over 1 to the power of 10, which is just equal to 4, right? So let's look back at our result. If rho is greater than 1, then this is going to diverge. So this tells us that the series diverges. So if so far none of that is working out, your fifth option is to see if a sub k is a rational function. And you can try using the limit comparison test. You can also use the comparison test. I think the limit comparison test is a bit stronger, so I always suggest it. But up to you. So what is the limit comparison test? So first you have your a sub k. That's the one that's given to you. And you're comparing it to some b sub k, right? And so those two infinite series are what you're working with. 
what you do is you say L is equal to the limit as K approaches infinity of A sub K divided by B sub K. So you divide those two little formulas. There are multiple outcomes here. So the first one is if L is between zero and infinity, so it's a finite positive number, then A sub K and B sub K do the exact same thing. They either both converge or they're both going to diverge, right? If L is equal to zero and B sub K converges, that means our A sub K is also going to converge. Now, if L is equal to infinity and the B sub K diverges, then A sub K also diverges, right? So here's our example. We have the series K equals one to infinity, and that's gonna be five K squared plus K minus one over K to the power four plus four K squared minus three. That is a rational function, right? A rational function is just two polynomials being divided by one another. And this is going to be our a sub k. Now we want to find a b sub k to um, compare it to. And what I'm going to do is take the highest powers of the numerator and the denominator. So here we're going to compare it to k equals 1 to infinity of k squared divided by k to the fourth. But of course, you can simplify that down to just be 1 over k squared. Now this is a p series. That's why you usually compare it when it's a rational function, because you get a p series out of it. This p is equal to 2, which is greater than 1, so that's going to converge. So we know our b sub k converges. Now we actually need to take the limit. So l is equal to the limit as k approaches infinity. We take our a sub k, right? So that's going to be our 5k squared plus k minus 1 divided by k to the power 4 plus 4k squared minus 3. And we divide it by our b sub k. I'm going to just multiply by the reciprocal k squared over 1. So let's go ahead and multiply that k squared in. Since we're working with a limit at infinity, you know, you can simplify it any way you want to. I like taking the highest power of the numerator and the denominator because at infinity, those two are going to behave the same way, right? So the limit as k approaches infinity, that's going to be 5k to the power 4 divided by k to the power 4. As you can see, this simplifies really nicely to just be a 5, and the limit of a constant is just equal to that constant. So looking back at the results, we have that L is a positive finite number. So that means that these series are going to do the same thing. And we already said our b sub k is going to converge, right? We have that using the p series test, it converges. So that tells us our a sub k is also going to converge, right? So that's how the limit comparison test can be super helpful. If none of this is still working, you can see if it's an alternating series. So if it's alternating in signs, then you can apply the alternating series test. So two conditions for it. The first one is that the a sub k is non-increasing for some index k greater than or equal to n. So at some point it's not increasing and we also need to have that the limit as k approaches infinity of our a sub k is going to zero. If both of those conditions are met, then that tells us that it's going to converge. It doesn't tell us anything about diverging. Um, so if those two fail, you need to apply a different test. So here's an example. We have k equals one to infinity of negative one fifth to the power of k. So notice we can go ahead and rewrite this. We have k equals one to infinity and we can go ahead and split up that negative one to the k one over five to the power of k, right? Or if you wanted to, you could rewrite this as k equals one to infinity of negative one to the k divided by five to the k, whatever you prefer. This helps us see what our a sub k is, right? The a sub k is without the alternating portion, so that's gonna be one over five to the k. The first thing we need to show is that this is non-increasing, and you can do that by treating it like a function, like if you have f of x equals one over five to the x, you can show that this is decreasing for x values greater than or equal to one, in this case, it's pretty trivial. So this is gonna be one over five as a se sequence, one over 25, one over 125. I think that you can argue with logic. This is obviously not increasing. There will never be a point where it starts like increasing. So we have that our a sub k using logic is non-increasing for k values greater than or equal to one. And you could write out more information. Like I said it, you can go ahead and write down like this is not going as k goes to infinity, one over five to the k is going to continually decrease. The other thing we need to have is that the limit as k approaches infinity of our a sub k, so one over five to the k, this goes to zero. Five to the power of k is gonna get real big. So one over that is gonna get real small. This is gonna go to zero. Since both of these conditions are met, then we know that our series converges. Additionally, when we have an alternating series, we can tell if it converges absolutely or converges conditionally. So we have that if the absolute value of a sub k converges, then our actual series is going to converge absolutely. Now, if we take the absolute value, so we take away that alternating portion and the series now diverges, 
and we have that our original series does converge, then that tells us our a sub k is going to converge conditionally. So let's go ahead and see some examples of that. First, we have the alternating harmonic series. We know that this one converges, right? If you use the alternating series test, this is going to converge. But if I took away that alternating portion, I take the absolute value, we get the harmonic series, which we know diverges. So that means this convergence is conditional on the alternating. It needs to be there in order for it to converge. So we say that it converges conditionally, right? That's a little different than this series. So we have um, the alternating one over k squared, right? If we were to use the alternating series test, one over k squared, that's gonna be non-increasing. Its limit is gonna go to zero. And so this one is going to converge, right? Now, if I took the way the alternating portion took the absolute value, I get one over k squared. I can just use the p series test and this is also going to converge. So this is going to converge whether the alternating is there or it's not, which means that our series is going to converge absolutely. So that's all I have for us in this video today. If you enjoyed it, I have many more like it, so make sure to check out my playlist or link down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.